What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas Pro 18 tutorial for you. And today we're going to learn about the best 4K render settings for YouTube. And just in case you weren't aware, Vegas 18 is also included in Vegas Post, a full-on post-production package that includes Vegas Effects, Vegas Pro, and Vegas Image. I'll have all the information and affiliate links linked in the description below if you want to check that out. So let's go ahead and jump into Vegas 18. Okay, so we have Vegas Pro 18 loaded up. Now let's just say you have your project already done in here and you're ready to render. We're going to go up to File, Good Under Render As, and then we have a bunch of options right here. You're here for the best render settings, so I'm going to tell you those first. That is Magix Intermediate. Magix Intermediate is basically their answer to Apple's ProRes. If you don't know what Apple's ProRes is, it's basically an extremely high quality file rendering type that most companies use to create blockbuster movies. So if you want blockbuster movie quality, Magix Intermediate is your choice. There's a couple other options up here that I'm going to explain afterwards, and we'll get to that later. So choose Magix Intermediate, and then you can just choose the first one because we're going to customize it. So select it and go down to Customize Template. Now up here we want to make sure Include Video is checked. Unless for some reason you don't want video and just audio, then you can uncheck that. So next we'll go down to Frame Size and select that drop down. It already has some preset resolutions that are the most average resolutions used already here, but if you wanted to choose Custom Frame Size, you can select that and put whatever numbers you wanted in here. Just as a side note, the biggest resolution you can use inside Magix Intermediate is 5120 by 2160. If you try to go higher than that, it will drop you down. So if we go to like 8096, it'll bring it down to 5120. If we go 8096, it'll bring it down to 2160. That is the maximum you can go. But since we're doing 4K, there's two different types of 4K we can use. We have 4K UHD and Cinema 4K. The difference between these two is 4K UHD is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is usually that perfect rectangle monitor that most people have. Cinema 4K is basically a little bit longer on the sides, so you're going to get some cinematic bars at the top and bottom. Any one of these resolutions is good. You see blockbuster movies on both versions of these, UHD and Cinema 4K. So the only reason you'd want to use Cinema 4K is if you are recording in Cinema 4K and you want that cinematic bar aspect ratio, or you want your video just to be a little bit wider. But most people are going to be using 4K UHD, so we're going to select that one. Allow source to adjust frame size. We want to keep that unchecked because if you're using multiple resolution clips to make your video, those could alter the way your resolution looks and we don't want that. We're going to skip profile real quick and talk about frame rate. You can drop down the frame rate and it has predetermined frame rates to choose. The lowest is 23.976 and the highest is 60. Now depending on which one you use, that's going to adjust how big your files are. So we're going to start with 23.976 or 24p. And let's go up to the profile. If we drop this down, we see a bunch of options right here. What these numbers mean, 422 and 444, is the chroma subsampling, which simplified is how sharp your video colors are. Typically DSLRs and most things use 420 chroma subsampling, so by choosing 422, you're going a little bit more, which is totally fine, and your file size still won't be that big. The only reason you want to choose 444 is if you're using 444 chroma subsampling when you're recording your footage on a really high-end camera. Most people can't afford that $15,000 camera to record this type of video, so by choosing this, the only thing you'll be doing is increasing your file size and you won't visually see anything different. So stick with the 422s. Now starting at the top, we have Proxy, LT, and then we got the blank regular 422, and HQ. By selecting one of these, the only difference you're going to see is how big your files are. It's changing the bitrate. So with 4K UHD, if you choose proxy, your bitrate's usually going to be around 100 to 140 megabits per second. If you choose LT, your bitrate may go around to about 200 megabits per second. If you choose regular 422, your bitrate can go up to about 400 megabits per second. And if you choose 422HQ, then your bitrate's going to be above 500. So depending on your source footage, you don't need to go above whatever that bitrate is. So let me give you an example. I can record my footage of myself in either 150 or 400 megabits per second. So I'll never need to use 422HQ. And so if I'm recording the 400 megabits per second, I want to use intermediate 422 regular. If I'm recording in my 150 megabits per second, I'm just going to stick with proxy because that's really close. Now this number changes depending on your frame rate. So if we go down to frame rate and you choose, let's just say 60, which is another very common choice, and we go up to our options. If you choose proxy, your bitrate's gonna be around the 300 megabits per second range. 
pretty much double. If you choose LT, we're looking at over 400. If you choose 422, we're looking at over 5 to 600. If you choose HQ, we're looking at over 6 to 700 megabits per second. And that's just huge. So if I ever want to render 4K 60 frames per second stuff, I'm always choosing proxy. So again, choose your profile and frame rate based upon what your source footage is, and you'll be fine. By default, the field order is none progressive scan, and you can't change it to anything else. For pixel aspect ratio, you can either choose 1 or 1.333. By choosing 1.333, your video is going to be stretched wide, and most people don't want that. So by default, let's keep it on 1. Output color space, you can't change that to anything, so keep it default. We do have a disable hardware acceleration button down here, so if you want to render using your processor only and not be assisted by your graphics card, you can choose this option. But by leaving it unchecked, your graphics card will be used and your rendering will be a bit faster. Let's go down to the audio tab. First option up here at the top is include audio, and that's always checked. You can uncheck it if you do not want audio for whatever reason. Sample rate, you can't change that. It's stuck at 48. So let's go down to the project tab. Video rendering quality, I always like to put this on best. Stereoscopic 3D mode, I always keep it on use project settings, unless you have some specific 3D settings you need to change it to. But usually you'll always want it on use project settings. For color space, I like to set this on Rec. 709. That is the average color space you see most movies and TV shows in. So by selecting this, I ensure I have the most accurate colors. You can change this to whatever color space you want, but I'm going to stick with Rec. 709. For color range, by default you're going to be on limited, but you have the option to change to full. This again is going to change depending on how you recorded your footage. So your best bet is to select one of these, render a small portion of it, see how it looks, select the other one, render a small portion of it, see how it looks, and compare them and see which one looks better to you, and then use that one. But by default, everybody's going to really want to use limited. So we're going to select that. Once you're done, go up here, and you can rename it to whatever you want, and then hit the little floppy disk, and it will save the template. And those are the best render settings in Vegas. So now I'm going to talk about the other ones real quick. I'm going to hit cancel. And then the most common secondary option is Magic's AVC. This is basically an upgraded version of the Sony AVC. But by choosing Magic's AVC, you can still render some high quality things, but you may see some banding and the sharpness may not be as crisp as Magic's Intermediate. And then we have Magic's HEVC, which is the High Efficiency Video Codec. Basically, this renders your high quality video at about 40% smaller file size. The only downsides to using this is, first, it takes forever to render. It takes a much longer time to render. And second, depending on what kind of hardware you have, AMD, NVIDIA, you know, things like that, you may see some weird little glitches or color splotches. I've had some pixelation issues, and so I typically stay away from HEVC. But again, you're here for the best render settings, and that is Magic's Intermediate. And there you have it. If this tutorial helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there, because that'll really help me out. And if you wanted, you can support the channel through Patreon. I'll have the link in the description below. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.